I think that many of us noticed new Apple Keynote being filmed on iPhone, iPhone 15 Pro. But it was filmed with a team of professionals, with very fancy equipment. How is it possible to film on iPhone in some real life conditions? That's what I want to show you in this video. Basically everything what you are seeing here and here is already filmed on iPhone 15. So how does it compare to a full frame camera? I will show you side by side comparison in this video. I also want to give you my thoughts about if it's possible to ever replace these professional cameras and I'll show you my video settings. So let's start. So what do you think now seeing it side by side? Full frame camera and the iPhone 15 Pro camera? Well, it doesn't matter what I say, it will always be my subjective opinion. But you can share with me in the comments which one of these images you like more. I think I am more leaning towards the iPhone camera. But not because of the image quality, but because of the convenience of filming. You know the quality will never be so good. If you compare size of this lens and the sensors you have in a small iPhone, it's unbeatable. You will always get better depth of field, better lightning in the full frame camera than you can get in the processed image of iPhone. And honestly, no professional production would use iPhone. At least not yet. You know, most of the image is software processed. This blue background is not natural, it's all fake. But I don't care at all what is not fake today. The raw photography where you just took your camera, went outside, take a picture and print it, that's all gone. Today everything is retouched, edited. But I don't think it's a wrong thing. I think it's part of the photography. It takes a lot of skill and knowledge not to just take the picture, but to turn that picture into a great looking image when you edit it. So as I said, the sensors on the real camera, that's unbeatable. But there are many other advantages to the phone. And the most and obvious one is the size and weight. So easily portable. And you can get the great smooth videos just using a small gimbal. Comparing to this gear which is hundreds of dollars. And even this video which you are looking now is just filmed through the continuity camera on the Mac. With something which cost me $20. There is one good old saying connected to that. It says, the best camera is the one you have with you. And you tend to have your phone with you all the time. So you can just pull it out of the pocket and straight away take the shot. For professionals, the camera will always be the right choice. But steadily the gap is really closing between the phone and the camera. And even my previous video here on YouTube was filmed on the iPhone. So you can check that out and see that it's not such a big difference. So I am thinking of really switching towards iPhone. What do you think about that? Well, let's move on to the settings as I promised in the beginning of the video. I just want to show you how I have it set on the iPhone. So first open the settings and scroll all the way down to camera. Here you have three different options. The first standard video format I have set to 4K at 30 frames per second. I don't need to be going to 60 frames per second. If I need slow motion videos, I will switch to slow mo mode. So this is good enough for me and saving a lot of space. I also tend to turn off HDR videos. They are not so much better and it's much easier to process these videos later on if you don't film in HDR. In slow motion, I also tend to use the lower mode. 120 frames per second is good enough for me. You will rarely need to slow down more than that. And again, you are saving more than two times the size of the file. And at last, my favorite mode, the cinematic. It can turn the boring footage into very nicely looking smooth video with a lot of depth in the picture. And I like to enhance this film look by actually using 24 frames per second. So I'm not even using 30 here. This is not about saving some space, but it's about this kind of film look. And if you scroll down a little bit lower, you will find two more toggles which I always like to use. That's grid and level. You can see the level line in the middle. 
and even gives you some haptic feedback when you straighten it up. So I think that's a really cool option and also using the grid helps you put nice framing to that image. So that's about the settings. I hope that this video helped you at least in some way and give you some ideas and my thoughts about the iPhone camera. I think it's quite interesting how the technology is moving. And if you like these kind of videos, then give it a thumbs up and I will catch up with you in the next video.